On today's armed expedition, I have been contracted by the Yellowstone Rangers to help them push gnomes out of northern Idaho, near one of the most prosperous settlements. They have been raiding these settlements for months, and there is one very particularly dangerous assault gnome that I have been assigned to find and kill. All right, let's go over the gear that I brought with me on this expedition. Obviously, I've got my R Mystery Ranch Terra Frame 50. The reason why I'm taking this bag, it'll, it is a little overkill for a mission where I'm trying to keep things lightweight. However, I've got a lot of extra storage in this bag. There's a rumor that one of the attack gnomes, the one that I've been assigned to find and take out, there's a rumor that he stole a 300 Blackout during the summer, a 300 Blackout AR. 15. That would be an incredible asset for me and my group. Having essentially an MP5 sized weapon that shoots 30 caliber bullets is a great asset when we're worried about Sasquatches, moose, uh, bears, you know, there's all sorts of different threats that we would be much more confident taking on if we had a 30 caliber gun. In here, I've got some extra socks. I've got some chargers here. I am carrying my Baofeng radio. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, in there, I've got a bunch of other stuff along with a light and the rest is just extra batteries. So got to make sure you're carrying spares, obviously, when you're out here. These are my two 32 ounce Nalgene water bottles. I just got done purifying a lot of water. So this water is nice and warm and it should not freeze. The temperature today is literally 30 degrees. And so a lot of the snow is melting off of the trees, even though we're in mid December. So by the way, if you're interested in that sticker or that sticker, or my personal favorite, that sticker, go check out Civilian Expedition Outfitters in the description, go get yourself one. As far as my chest rig today, I am carrying my oh so favorite Hill People Gear Heavy Recon chest rig. I'm usually carrying an AR-15 mag in here, but because the AR-15 did not make it today, I am carrying a Baofeng UV-5R. It's an incredibly basic setup. If you have any suggestions on what upgrades I should make to the UV-5R, I know this antenna is, is a crap, um, <laughs> please leave those in the comments. I would love to hear from people more experienced than me. I'm also carrying my ever favorite Moraniv, uh, oh, what's, what's this freaking model? I forgot, but this is a very good knife for very cheap. I did break the tip off the front of the knife, so unfortunately this isn't, you know, as durable as a lot of other knives. However, Moraniv did replace it. Now, as you know, I'm very against owning products that you need warranties to keep going because if the collapse really happens, uh, you're not gonna have a warranty service. So I probably will be replacing this at some point, but it is a good knife for, you know, whittling and, you know, cutting up food. Like it's a very good sort of camp knife. I, re I very much like it. Now in the front portion of the bag here, I have a cell phone, which is not Canon uh, to the lore here. <laughs> we have another uh, Petzl here. Well, this is an Energizer, but same kind of deal. We have a pretty ghetto, but I would think pretty useful uh, compass bracelet here. Um, with some paracord, so if I ever find myself needing that. I've got multiple ways of starting fire. I've got flint and steel, obviously, but then I have some matches. These matches suck, frankly. I do not get these matches. I've also got a bunch of spare batteries in there for my flashlight that is on my AR, so those are not gonna be helping us this trip. Now, in the back uh, pocket of the Hill People Gear chest rig, I've got the, the SKD Pig gloves. Really highly recommend these. I'm not even wearing, wearing them right now. Frankly, I am perfectly comfortable and warm uh, as it is. I have I am not chilly at all. I feel absolutely great, so I'm not wearing these just yet, but these are a great resource to have. I also have a, a neck gaiter from PNW Gorilla. Again, I don't feel any need to wear this right now. It's very, very warm, so I'm kind of nice. And last but not least is the weapon of today's adventure, the Winchester Wildcat. This is a essentially Winchester's take on the Ruger 1022. Um, it takes the same mags, it functions exactly the same. It's a little bit better than a stock Ruger. In my opinion, it's got this nice stock. It's got Picatinny on top all ready to go. I think I absolutely need to get just some kind of like red dot sight on this, something cheap and durable. Um, these iron sights, this rear one is literally made out of plastic. I wouldn't be sur surprised if I lost it this expedition. The only reason I'm carrying this and not an AR is because one, my wife, uh, she wanted the AR at home, so I'm not gonna argue with her, but <laughs> second, of all, um, this is a very in and out kind of trip. We're trying to get everything cleared out by the end of the day. And so we're trying to be mobile. We're trying to be quick. Um, when you're wearing snowshoes, you're weighed down as it is. And so if you don't need to carry more gun, I uh, don't carry more gun, at least in today's case. Usually I would recommend carrying a lot more than you need, uh, but today we're kind of going with the bare minimum. 
I'm carrying right now, there's a 15 round mag. I do have a 25 round mag and a 10 round mag in my pockets. Just notice for whatever reason, the 15 round mags have been more reliable for me. Guns in this platform are very, very finicky. They're very, very picky. Uh, so you kind of have to just get different mags and, and you know figure out what combination your gun likes of uh, magazine and ammo. This is gonna have to do. Boom, nice water seal. It's not the, like it's only 50 liters, so it's not like crazy big capacity, but for, you know, for overnight trips or for, and if I pack it right, I definitely can use this to sustain myself, sustain myself for a pretty long amount of time. But as you can see, you know, side profile, like certainly not packed to capacity. We need to find this attack gnome. We need to take care of him. And if we can find that alleged uh, 300 blackout AR that he stole, that would be great. Um, gnomes are very interesting creatures. They insist on wearing bright red hats. If they attempted to camouflage at all, they would be almost impossible to find. But because they insist on wearing red hats, they're actually pretty easy to find. The rest of the Yellowstone Rangers have the privilege right now of operating on a snowmobile. I'm not a ranger, but I do work with them, but I am operating on snowshoe right now because I have to penetrate deep into the woods uh, where I believe he is, according to Intel. And so began my mile and a half trek into the woods. Certainly not a long trip by any means, but these days I'll take all the training I can get and all the time outdoors that I can possibly get. If I keep going on the same route long enough, I would eventually hit a canyon and a waterfall. If you guys would like to see me visit that place in full kit one day, please leave a comment down below. I would certainly love to do it myself. It's crazy to me that 300 years ago in the Revolutionary War, we had 18 and 19 year olds with primitive snowshoes dunking on the British. I'm using modern stuff and it's crazy to me that they were able to do it so effectively. All right, let's approach cautiously here. Like I said, these guys are pretty trigger happy. They give themselves away pretty quick. Let's make sure we're... Oh shit, I'm using lead point bullets. That is not gonna go well. Let's switch that out. Now obviously, my first round's still gonna be lead tipped, but with semi-autos, especially if you actually have to like rely on a semi-auto 22 for your life, you want to be carrying copper plated. They feed so much better. Now I also have a 22 conversion kit for my AR, but as I said, the AR had to stay home today. It had other missions and objectives that it needed to fulfill. So I'm stuck with this piece of crap. But after today, if all goes well, I should have another AR. Nothing, clear. Man, look at that. Don't get me wrong, I like this gun, but certainly not a super rugged outdoor tool, in my opinion. This is the one I'm worried about here. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. At this point, I kinda just want him to shoot at me. The deal with gnomes, they shoot 22 short, 22 long rifle homemade weapons with like three or four rounds in a mag. There's a very obvious pop and a screech. Oh shit! Oh, fuck. Frick it. Are you freaking kidding me? And all the boomers on the internet, the 1022 is the best survival gun! Got him. Well, well, it's amazing. The power of the 22 long rifle, huh? There you go. Now all that's left, 
course, I'll pick up all those pieces off camera, but <laughs> now all that's left is to find a 300 blackout that's allegedly somewhere. Assault gnomes, they like to mark their hiding places. You just have to know what to look for. But before looking for this hidden 300 blackout, I decided to try my hand at starting a fire in the winter, something that I still very much struggle to do. As you can see, I've got a pretty good work done on this pile here. So yeah, um, basically this wood sucks and it's really hard to use, but um, I'm getting there. I'm building up a nice big pile of scrap. We'll see if I can get a fire started. Wait a minute. Okay. It's like a giant T. No way. Freaking yes, dude. <laughs> Guys, I have to shoot it. I have to get the snow off the gun. Guys, oh, I'm so sorry. I guess I'm just gonna have to use some ammo here. <laughs> Man, look at that. So this, this is a 300 blackout, uh, I guess you could say PDW. Although this is about a, as big a gun can be without being considered just a short barreled rifle. To a little assault gnome, this is like a freaking artillery cannon. But to someone like me, this is a great asset. This really expands my capability. Heaven forbid I ever get a silencer and some, sub, some subsonic rounds. But honestly, supersonic 300 blackout is super underrated as just a self-defense cartridge. I mean, look at how small this gun is. And shooting supersonic ammunition, I am going to put some big holes in people if I need to. So absolutely amazing so glad we found this right guys i want to end this video with an in, with an invitation i know it's kind of ridiculous to run into your national forest you know taking in clay gnomes and shooting them and calling that training and although yes that is absolutely not the most realistic combat scenario everything else about today's adventure is something that i can carry with me for one i'm getting a really good workout right continuing to improve my body physically uh, i'm learning and getting more and more hours in my snowshoes which means my brain is going to learn how to operate with snowshoes as less brain power i have to devote to that that i can devote to other things I'm learning what my body is capable of and not capable of. I'm learning what it looks like to keep your eyes out for a specific target. There are all sorts of little things that I am actually gaining from in this little adventure, even though it is, you know, the pretext of the adventure is a fictitious story that I made up. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Share the video with anyone else who you feel like would enjoy it. I really value your guys' support. The algorithm hates my YouTube channel. One time I make a video, gets 100,000 views, another time I'll make a video, it barely gets 100, you know? So I don't know if it's just me or the algorithm or what, but please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Stay safe out there.